Hi everybody. Welcome. Sup. <laughs> Sup. Welcome to our new podcast, Maximum Reverb. My name is Dougal. I'm Chris. And next to Chris is Stephen. Stephen. <laughs> Hi, Stephen. He loves coming in. Oh, he loves it. It's great. Yes, he's not in. And this is our first episode, so he's doing a great job so far. Um, so, yeah, uh, this is just a, a podcast. Talk about films, talk about shit we like. Shoot the shit, you know? Just have a good-ass time. So, yeah, we should jump right into it. We're actually in college, like, Stealing attending college. Facilities. Using the facilities to actually record our podcast. Um, what we're doing here is we're studying film. Yeah, media and film. Media and film. Mm. It's good. Uh, we've done a handful of stuff already. Music video. Music video. I was a ghost. No, I was a guy. You were a, a guy. Ghost. Chasing yeah. a ghost. Yeah, bro. You're chasing ghosts, bro. Come on, let's get this real. <laughs> um, yeah, what I mean... What wanted you to go to college? What wanted you to start college and, you know, uh, film? Because me and you are quite elder gentlemen for yes. college. Yeah, we are. I'm 21 and you are... 23. 35. 35, yeah. And... I'm 72. I did art mm -hmm. in 2016 in this college. Really? I didn't actually know that. Yeah, I did art in this... Just to tell you, by the way, we're attending City of Glasgow College. We're in yeah. Scotland. If you want to know our location... If you if you want to come and bomb us or Autographs something. Autographs and all that shit, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I did art a floor above us in oh, right, 2016. Okay. And then I did art in 2017 at a different college because I failed that last course. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then I took a year out to because I guess art's not for me because mm. I failed that course. Yeah. Uh, and I started watching video essays and film and I got really into it. And oh. I really... Point. I start like I started just knowing films like 180 degree where I already knew that yeah just from watching YouTube mm -hmm. and I thought that's I'm actually interested why not do something I mean the only scary part is if you're not if you don't get hired by BBC Scotland and STV mm -hmm. in Glasgow you're fucked in Glasgow true that's why that's why I, I think my main goal is to branch out I don't think I'll be yeah stuck in Glasgow for the rest of my days but um starting off in a, in a place like that doesn't hurt though yeah, indie stuff is good. Does not hurt. Does not hurt. Um, with myself, I um, bit different. I've been a bit more film focused for the majority of my life. Mm. I um, with starting off with my mum, she massive film buff throughout her life. When I grew up, I grew up watching all these massive crit critically acclaimed films, mm. and show me you know all these actors, directors writers everyone I, I and for some reason i've got this dump in my brain where all useful shit has been pushed out and nothing for but film, film shit. shit yeah has been put in and um yeah I, I i used to live in tenerife fun fact and i just kind of chilled there after i finished yeah. secondary school which i did attend at tenerife okay. yeah i i just kind of pissed about for five years mm. and then because my brother he wanted to, well, he kind of fucking stole my idea. I thought you stole his idea. No, I, he fucking stole mine. All right. <laughs> I've, always, I've always been into film and shit. I've always wanted to work in the industry. He hasn't, yet he didn't know what I wanted to do. Let's call it inspired. He was inspired. Yeah, man. Inspired. And he, he came to this exact college and did a course in film. And while I was in Tenerife, I was like, that? little dickhead <laughs> that should be me <laughs> is that so you got inspired by him yeah stealing your my idea. inspiration so he insp i inspired him to inspire me and you were both inspired by your mum by a domino effect yeah it's pretty hot man it's pretty hot dude i'd fuck it i just fucking watch youtube that shows my family life <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> and steven what about you what about you steven my what? good man <laughs> what are you up to <laughs> Do you, do, you, do you like film? Oh, great. Thank you, Stephen. Well, Stephen wants to do writing. Don't you, Stephen? Don't you, Stephen? Yeah. yeah, he doesn't want to actually get into the whole film, film well, aspect I mean, of it. We, you, did, we did just say writing's not a part of film. That's pretty insulting. Yeah, writing's a big, really big fucking part of film. Sorry, Stephen. Sorry, Stephen. But he doesn't want to work industry work. Technic like, he, doesn't want to, he, he doesn't want to get his hands dirty. What would be a film... Or director that inspired you? To inspired me? 
James Wan. Um, thanks to a little film called Saw. Haven't seen it. Never seen Saw. Never saw it. Oh, he's never saw it. <laughs> I know. I know. I really appreciate. Like, I saw a lot of videos on Saw, and I, lo- I know it's like all interconnected, and there's movies yeah. going back, and you get to see the other side of like another situation. Let's avoid anything after Saw three, because Saw one, two, and three was directed saw- and written by James Wan and Lee Whannell. I think I saw a lot of two when I was like eight, and it fucked me. Two's okay. Out of the three, first three, two is probably the weakest. Oh, I didn't see this. Shit. Yeah, he, he fucking... Uh... Did he do Insidious 2? Yep. Right, because that has, like, going back to the first movie. Mm-hmm. And then that reminded me of Saw, and I realised it was the same director. There you go. But yeah, so James Wan, right? Let me just have a wee rant about James Wan here, because I fucking adore the man. He, he, along with James Whannell, came up with this idea to make a, 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 a film, a horror film, mm. obviously with the Saw concept, mm. fucking dude trying to dish out his own sense of justice by giving people an ultimatum either mutilate yourself or die and afterwards lovely yeah lovely options and afterwards uh, after you've mutilated yourself and survived um, his goal is to make you learn a lesson make you learn your lesson you've been bad oh you neglected your daughter oh you oh, <laughs> saw three your daughter died and you want to avenge her you better learn that lesson, boy. You better not fucking... Excuse me? I'm trying to save my kid. That's a bit dodgy. Oh, no, he's it? not trying to save his kid. His kid's dead. Oh. Drunk driver. You're so. saying all this deep shit. I just want to know, how did the puppet ride the bike? The hydraulics or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, <laughs> built that fucking thing? James Wan actually did build the first... Uh, the puppet. first... Belly. But, oh, yeah, belly. Belly jigs. Is it belly? Because I know Billy is the main puppet from Dead Silence. Have you ever seen Dead Silence? No. Another James Wan film. Incredible. Should have had sequels. It was meant to be a series thing. Did not pick up enough traction. Was that before or after Saw? It was a flop. It was a great film, but it was a flop after Saw. I think it was after the second Saw. Really? Yeah, because Saw 2 came out a year after the first Saw did. (laughs) Because they didn't want to make it a whole series Saw initially. Saw 2 came out a year after because of the overwhelming success that Saw had. During Halloween, didn't it? They're all yeah, ha- they're all Halloween. Yeah. They've got that whole ad campaign. Mm. If it's Halloween, it must be Saw. I love it, dude. But yeah, so, I keep getting off track. The inspiration that came from Saw mm-hmm. is that James Wan, Lee Manel, and uh, the Australian dudes in Australia were like, we want to go pitch this film we've made. Mm-hmm. We want to go around to studios in America, pitch it. Well, they got rejected a lot, didn't they? They got rejected a yeah. fuck ton. But to solidify themselves a bit more, they uh, directed a short. Mm. So if you've seen the first Saw, right? There's... Is, that, is that one of the trap scenes as yeah. one of the se- like, things they filmed? N- yeah. Or an adaption? Well, they, 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 yeah, they recreated it for the actual theatrical. Yeah. But I, 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 will, um, I will admit that I actually think that the, the short is better than the scene that the short's based off in the film. Well, like, edited or direct? All of it. Oh. It's just, there's the better shots. Um, it's the uh, reverse bear trap. It's the yeah, one that's thought, on their face and it goes... I <laughs> thought it was, the, yeah, the original idea. Yeah. The reverse bear trap. I, I, originally, they wanted to do uh, the scene of Lee Winnell's character. Mm. He is in his apartment. It's a really fucking cool scene, actually. Before he gets kidnapped, he's walking around his apartment. The lights are out, but they're not working at all. So he gets his camera out mm-hmm. and he's, he, he tries to look around the, the apartment with just his flash. Yeah. So he'll take a picture, it'll flash, take a picture, it'll flash. Mm-hmm. Very scary, very suspenseful. Masterful. But with this little short, they went around all these places. Reject- rejected. Rejected from everywhere mm-hmm. until they came to a little a little place called Lionsgate. Oh, they're the, oh, and they were like... They're the big horror people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they were like... Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I think we'll do it. Was we'll get someone else to direct it, and James Wan was like, "Fuck off, I'm directing." Was Lionsgate quite small at the time? No. Was it pretty big? Somewhat big. They had a lot of good shit out yeah. by that time. They had a lot of shit out because I, because I, I also thought that when I found this out, mm. and I thought, "Shit, did fucking Saw kickstart Lionsgate success?" No, it didn't. It was it's been like twenty years before yeah. that it was a fucking film. Uh, 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 a production company. Um, 
but yeah, just just the amount of effort and the gusto and the fucking stones it took for these boys to to, to use all their money. They, f- they fucking emptied so out their bank accounts to make their short. The story of how we got made is like gives it's you hope. Massive inspiration to me. I think it's fucking phenomenal. And then they came out. They fucking both of them. You can't think of James Wan without Lee Whannell. People people give James Wan all the credit. Lee Whannell is big brain. Big brain behind the Who wrote shit. it? Was it both Whannell. Lee Whannell wrote Mostly. I think James Wan wrote some of it, but mostly mm. Lee Whannell. Um, he, he, they together wrote and directed the first three Saws. Uh, the first two Insidious films. Yeah, like them. Because Insidious 3 is what started sucking for me. Insidious 3 is not bad. I just think it was Directed by Lee Whannell. First ever, this is director. Di, di, oh. oh my fucking god. His directorial d- debut was in Series 3. Is that really and hard to say? It too. That really fucked me up. Directorial. <laughs> review. Um, yeah, and then I don't know why Jim, uh, why I, why Lee Whannell was like, nah, I'm out. When did Series 3 come out? 2017. Who cares? No, that was like the last key. That was like the fucking fourth film. Though. It's good. I love the Insidious movies, dude. But, um, what's the other fucking. What is the other. I'm going to have his Wikipedia up right <gasps> now. Dude. Uh, he did Conjuring 2. Conjuring, that's it. The, the, his other big thing. Yeah. The, the unfortunately, Lee Winnell was not part of mm. was Conjuring. That's. Out of the three big series, James Wan has spearheaded, saw. Conjuring and um, Insidious. He uh, Lee Winnell was only worked on Saw and Insidious. He did but not we, work in the Conjuring. I mean, did, I think he only did the second. The Conjuring, Conjuring as well is fucking amazing. The Conjuring Two is an incredible horror film. Yeah, it's Conjuring Two that and um, Conjuring. And that's another thing that I, I want to talk. I did. This has become the fucking James Wan podcast. But he directed <laughs> Fast and Furious Seven, right? Okay. As of, yeah, as of recently. I had only watched up till Tokyo Drift, the third one. Mm-hmm. So I made it a goal myself to watch all of them, and I did within like fucking two days. And I watched every Fast and Furious film. Mm-hmm. And I fucking, I was so. Seven is so good looking. <laughs> is that the one? There's some fucking crazy camera tricks in that film that was just, oh, it blew me away watching it, dude. It's so good. Unreal. Is that one with Paul Walker? Like at the end, that's the one. That that's, that's, that's that's his last one. Dude. That's oh. the. Tell you all about it when I see yeah, I've seen all the memes of it. <laughs> he also did Aquaman. Garbage. Yeah. Garbage. With that, is that Amanda Jason Heard? Momoa. She's yeah, she's she's good. a separate. That's another episode. She's a separatist. No, she's a separate topic. Oh. Don't fucking. <laughs> that's the worst thing about her. Worst thing about Amanda Heard. She's a fucking separatist, dude. Can't trust she her. Was, for, can't trust she her. Had for a great shit. track record before that. <laughs> Um, oh. I think Nassau get cut as well. I, th- I thought... <laughs> I thought Aquaman was shit when I watched it. But, to be fair, I wasn't paying attention because I assumed it was going to be shit. IMDB right here mm-hmm. is telling me otherwise. 7 out of 10. I... A lot, and most people just said it's really pretty looking, but the script is shit. And that's not James Wan. That is James Wan, unfortunately. He what? wrote the script? Fucking seven people wrote the script. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like he, the, everyone's complimenting the movie's visual, but yeah. the script is bad, and he didn't write that, did he? He was one of the seven that wrote the script. Oh. Three people wrote the story, two people wrote the screenplay, and then the other people did the other shit. I think yeah. that was like too many cooks stirring the pot, man. Oh, no, there was only five people. No. Fucking s- five people. Still pretty Six, bad. Six, dude, what? Six people. Is this like growing as you look it. at it? Yeah. <laughs> it's actually shrunk, because... Six people wrote it, mm-hmm. and then it's also got two credits for the created by, uh, yeah, for the original dudes. Um, I want to check the Rotten Tomatoes for Aquaman actually, because I want to see how good it did. Uh, and you know, I, I think Rotten Tomatoes is a far superior rating site when it comes to films. I know a lot of people. I I like. It IMDb. does get review bombed a lot. It does get review bombed a lot, but usually one of the two because it gives you the audience review and, and the, the critic critical, review yeah so usually one's gonna be bullshit the other one's not gonna be bullshit mm. normally the one you can trust more is the audience review i feel because i think i think the rule is if the woman's the lead the audience reviews are going to be most because 
nearly like Captain Marvel, Birds of Prey, they get review bombed a lot. I watched Birds of Prey the other night. I haven't. Is it good? It's pretty good. I thought it would be good. I, I got thought bombed. it would be shit. Nah. I, it was pretty good. I think a lot of people don't want to watch good. it because of Suicide Squad, but I think... Because that's a new creative team. I sent that meme the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it up. I'll show you guys. It's funny. Um, but... No, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Dude, Sonic the Hedgehog's got 66%. Oh, it's so close to perfect. It's not a splat. <laughs> it's still a fully formed tomato. I hope we add 3 more percent to that. 3 more percent? Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I just like Ben Schwartz a lot. I like Ben Schwartz and I... I know he's not in it, but I love Thomas Middleditch. <laughs> Middleditch? Who's he? Thomas Middleditch. Have you ever seen Silicon Valley? No. He's the, the main dude. And the fuck on Ben Schwartz is in that? Yeah, he plays Sonic. Oh my fucking. John Ralphio. Oh god. From fucking Parks and Recreation plays Sonic. Jesus Christ. Hey, I love Ben Schwartz. I think I he's funny. Him. I think he's hilarious. I know, it's just he's playing Sonic the Hedgehog. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I love him too. He's just played the Sonic the Hedgehog, bro. Mm. But yeah, no, I'm um I'm not necessarily excited. I think Sonic the Hedgehog will be a fun little family film. It won't be it won't be insulting. It won't be I'll watch when I'm drunk overly sometimes. shit. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's a good thing to be Who's making to it? watch under the influence. Who's making it? Is Who's, it, oh, let me actually it feels like it's Sony, but I think it's Paramount. Possibly Paramount, yeah. So remember the rings on the logo? Yes, I think you're 100% yeah, right. I think Paramount. it's Paramount. Sonic the Horde. It feels tag. like a Sony film, which is quite <laughs> insulting. <laughs> it feels like a Sony film. Oh, I'm just so happy they chuck. It's Paramount. It's Paramount. <laughs> I, th I had to get nice and deep on that one. It's fucking Paramount. Good shit. <laughs> but yeah, uh, do you have a director influence? Uh, do you have someone that blows your? Because I've got a, a list. I've, I can fucking start naming off some cunts, but I want to hear what you. What, what, who inspires you? I. Do I inspire you? Always. Oh, Chris. I. Controversially, one of my favorite, I mean, they're all my, one of my favorite films, but mm -hmm. the film I appreciate most mm -hmm. a lot, like a film I just love, is World's End, which is controversial because it's the most hated from that Edgar yeah. Wright trilogy. Uh, Edgar Wright's definitely. That's interesting. I've never heard anyone say they're favorite, favorite I just love the character stuff in it. That's I think great. the humor is really laid back, whereas Hot Fuzz and Sean Dead, that's so funny. They're, they're over the top, though. Yeah, like World's End felt really different. Um, it did have a different feel to it. It was more like bantery and like yeah. wet. Um, but yeah, Edgar Wright, just because like, I'm still rewatching those films and like I'm showing people, I'm like, oh, there's an Easter egg, there's an Easter egg. And I'm like, holy shit, there's one I didn't notice before. And that's, I don't know, 10 years on from some of them. Edgar Wright is truly another masterful filmmaker. Oh, I love him. He's fucking incredible, dude. He, the Cornetto trilogy. An incredible trilogy. I am, unfortunately, sorry, uh, a Shaun of the Dead purist. I think that's I the love best all one. like uh, some. I love them all too. Yeah, it's yeah. just when someone hit, like there's so many meme pages of Cornetto trilogy where like they hate the world's end. I don't know why. It's it's, it's okay. I will say when practically you it's probably not been looked at as the best. I mean, but I can see the charm. I can when, see why it would. When be you get favorite. drunk with mates, you got watching the first two is probably more fun. Yeah. But I think you can drink along with the th third one. <laughs> yeah, I think the third one just because that's them bar hopping. Isn't it? Weirdly, I quote the third one most to my pal. I mean, I love Words End. What's uh, your what's like, your go to quote? Like just I don't know, it's just like on the phone, just like punch the shit out of the wall. Like just little shit like that makes me laugh so much more than like you've got know, red big, on you. Yeah, more like the bigger <laughs> gags. I mean, I know they're iconic. I love all the films, but yeah. Words End is just amazing to me. And Edgar Wright's. I I one think I, to. I always He's, knew about Edgar Wright. When I was younger, I knew mm. Shaun of the Dead, I knew Hot Fuzz. Yeah. That was staples of a childhood. But the first film that made me take notice of him, mm. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Oh, controversially. I'm not huge on it. I don't know why. It feels like a movie I should Dude, love. I've got all six books. Do you want them? Um, do you want to borrow them? What do you think, Stephen? What do you think, Stephen? Should he take the books? Um, <laughs> world's... Well, sorry, Scott Pilgrim mm -hmm. versus the world. Um, I know it's like there's so many gags in it, like, but it's just it's not really my thing. 
Um, but I do, it's like, not a movie a lot, it's like, but I'd rate the skill put into it mm -hmm. better than most films I actually like. Like, yeah. I appreciate so much about that. I just, it's not really a story I'm into. Do you know what's a fun thing about Edgar Wright? As you know how there was, uh, within the film, there was all these video game yeah, pop-ups like, and stuff. And sounds and that. That was far heavier in the film than it was in the comics. The yeah, comics like he, weren't as poppy up. Yeah, he, had, he added his own film. style to it. He added his own fucking flair. Yeah. Very good. I thought Michael Cera was incredible in it. He played his own bass. He he was the only... Mm. They all had to learn their instruments for the film, but he was the only one that did know his instrument to start with. We about trivia, but... I think if just give, like... Like, the idea of Baby Driver, when I first heard about... Oh, Baby Driver. Dude. When I first heard about that, I thought... What a movie. That sounds a bit boring. Yeah. But... A baby like, you could, driving? <laughs> you could just give him anything, and he makes it amazing. He makes it fucking phenomenal. He's got a film out this year, hasn't he? So Last Night in Soho. A, a fucking... Another horror movie. I can't horror? wait. It's horror, yeah. Is it a comedy or just... Probably a comedy horror. I haven't oh, looked into it. There's not a lot like that's that. come out about it. But yeah, I have I have been up to it. I have been looking it up as well. I am... Um, I I think see when it comes to Baby Driver, see film films like Baby Driver, mm. you've got Baby Driver, fucking Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume One and Two, films that are Use built music. around by built around the music. Tracks, yeah, I'm pretty sure James so Gunn. Impressive, dude. James Gunn and Edgar Wright actually texted or emailed, really? making sure they didn't use each other's songs because they both came out in 2017. That's dope. So I didn't they made know sure that. they didn't know each, they made sure they used their own tracks. I think I prefer. Baby Driver soundtrack. Have you ever sat and listened to all three of the soundtracks? I haven't. Awesome um, mixtape one, two, and then the Baby Driver soundtrack. I've got a friend who loves that great too. I think he plays a few in his car. Like he has most of Baby Driver mm. Gardens mm -hmm. all mixed in his own playlist. Nice, dude. Nice. Yeah, yeah I've 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 got the uh, the Spotify playlist for it too. Mm. It's great. I love it. You got Bell Bottoms, Tequila, fucking uh, Holy Calamity. Great fucking. Oh, fucking dude. standout scene for me in Baby Driver was. Mm -hmm. The chase sequence, oh, uh, yeah. right, the, well, the very yeah. start. No, no, but that's great. I mean, anything in that movie is great. But just the chase, like when it's that thing, it's the bank heist, uh -huh. and he messes it up, and then the police are after him, and he's on the run, and it does like that panning shot where he runs across the park, and then goes yes, to a shopping mall. Yes, dude. Any case behind the tree and shit. Yeah, I mean, there's so much. Like, I'm appreciating the directing style. I'm like mm -hmm. kind of developing a crush on this guy now. Like, but it's just all of it's so good. You could just give me. I, mean, I, I know so many directors that would fuck that up. And yeah. It'd just be like shaky cam over the shoulder. Yeah. Panning shot for a cheat. Why is no one. Right, it has been done, but why is it not getting done more? People don't. I get what you mean. I get so impressed by impressive mm. camera work that it's hard to notice when a film is just void of it. I mean, sometimes, you know I, mean? I mean, sometimes over the shoulders, like, simpler is better for a scene. But yeah, like... sometimes you can pull it off. You can pull it off simplistic well. Mm. But see, going back to the James Wan thing, in yeah. Fast and Furious 7, what I was talking about, where I was fucking amazed by some of the camera shots, there's a fight at the start mm. of that film between Jason Statham and The Rock. Mm. And there's a fucking bit in it where one of the two, probably The Rock picking up Jason Statham, mm. picks him up and fucking... Bam, camera slams him, camera fucking falls the arch, dude. And just that alone was like, oh, fucking, it was beautifully done. James Wan as well, I, <laughs> I keep going on about him. He's perfect at the, the spiral zoom. Like, the... Like, like that. So it starts off upside uh, down, and then as it zooms in, it twists back. Is that used in Insidious at all? That's used a lot that, in Insidious. I think it's a bell. That's a big, that's like a, a really fun shot. I... I I I just I, that's biased in my head. I think he's the best director around. I I love Taika Waititi. Oh my god! Hunt for the Wilder People, Thor Ragnarok, mm. What We Do in the Shadows, Jojo. fucking Jojo Rabbit, dude. What? Did, a film. I'm so glad he got an Oscar. I am. He got best screen best screenplay. Did you, did you hear? He's so deserving. So deserving. Did you hear him in the press room? Someone asked him, "What would you? What do you want?" For writers like to help them, he said, "Oh, can you fix the keyboards on Max? It's really annoying to type." <laughs> there you go, bro. He's, he's. Oh, I love Taika Waititi. I, I think he's so genuinely funny. I'm so annoyed Edgar Wright didn't come to Marvel later because if Marvel's willing to get Taika Waititi, I think they're in a more mature era than they were in 2015 when they pushed away mm, Edgar. Mm -hmm. Edgar, because Ant Man's all right, but if can you imagine Edgar Wright Ant Man? Yeah, that was a thing for a while. Well, at first. For a I mean, bit, I th that for a good time. No, he wanted. I think he wanted that for years. 
really so many years like uh, it was like a little passion project yeah i don't know much about this this whole he was story. i think he was quoted in saying he the marvel wanted him to make a marvel film but he wanted to make an egg right film oh i see like they're kind of wanted it yeah i yeah. think marvel wanted it packaged and stuff like in a certain way yeah and a certain story and all that and i don't think he wanted that because ant-man the one we got kind of all right but it's okay i'm in a wasp was boring yeah uh, okay, let's talk about the MCU for a minute. Let's talk mm. about the MCU for a minute. Because I I love the MCU. I really love the MCU. But I will be the first to admit there is a good handful of duds in that, in that I think they're, filmography. Of, I think they're getting better. Like, they're getting they better, are. like, the TV shows are getting really brave with it. Yeah. The Russo brothers did something mm. amazing. Because... Yeah. Okay, 2012, Avengers came out, the first one. Joss Whedon directed Joss Whedon, it. Yeah. That was a big fucking thing. Big mouth. People thing. went mad, mm. fucking mad, right? It was yeah. really fucking good, but the fucking it's MCU like the... didn't get any, didn't start getting proper nuts until fucking Winter also, Soldier, I think. I think the visuals of it are so bad. Like, I'm pretty, the first. I don't like phase, Joss Whedon as a director. Phase one, I'm pretty sure, was shot in film. Four, I think, is definitely shot in film. Like, the contrast, really. I think Iron Man, mm. I think they all are, actually. Maybe not Captain America, I don't know, but the filmmaking at the start... So wait, you're saying Phase 1 was shot on film, whereas digital was used for the rest of it? Yeah, I think... Oh. I guess, and it's also, they had more time. Like, they're dishing out four movies a year sometimes now. Yeah, oh, how many... What they got it was, this it was year? Ir- They've got fucking two TV shows, Black Widow, mm-hmm. uh, The Eternals. I, I thought, think that's it. I, I think it's 2021, isn't it? Oh, no, 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 that's, that's all 2020. That's all this year, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, and back then it was like Iron Man, then Hulk. Mm-hmm. Two years later, Iron Man 2. And then yeah. a, two, a year after that, two other films, and then Avengers. Like, Phase was, 1 took a fucking minute, dude. Yeah, it was like four, but it was more spaced out than it is now. Oh, yeah. But I think it's because they have so many characters, but I'm glad they're branching off TV shows because mm-hmm. TV's probably better. Like, She-Hulk... Better as a TV show. Yeah, TV show better than the movie. I've always kind of thought Spider Man would be good for an actual TV show than the movie. But the effects would. The effects would. Yeah, the effects would need animation. Like, the effects would need movie budget. That's what they're giving to the Disney Plus. Yeah, dude, the budgets of those fucking shows. Mm. I want to actually look up the budgets of. um, What uh, what do you want to look up? Mm. Fucking uh, WandaVision? I'd say uh, Avengers is one of the more dull looking films, actually. Good shots, but like, it's the contrast is bad. The aspect ratio yeah. is a TV show. People, ratio. people are, people give uh, MCU a lot of shit because it does have this kind of ugly film mm. over it. Uh, as, yeah, if, it's as if gray. it's got some. The blacks scum. are the blacks are grey. The blacks are grey. It's very washed out in grey. Yeah, I've seen like videos like up in the saturation. It looks amazing. Mm-hmm. I think it's weird, man. Although Guardians too, I think that was that a was, really good color. Yeah, red. I thought. When I when I thought shit, because Guardians one I I thought was very colourful too. But when you look back at it, it's yeah. actually not as colour. Like when you watch there's Thor one Ragnarok, shot that sticks out in my head. Thor Ragnarok, colourful as fuck. Yeah. There's one shot in uh, the first Guardians though that I that does stick out to me, mm. and that is um, w- at the very start. Star Lord's got the the fucking orb or whatever that yeah, has the, the stone in it. Yeah. Mm. And he's running. He's getting shot at by the dudes, and he does the jump. Oh, yeah, the and the slow motion jump, I, I looked at that shot and I was like, wow, that's so fucking eye popping and great looking and shit. But then, as you said, compare it to some of their newer shit, mm. Thor Ragnarok Guardians 2, not even, quite as poppy as I thought it was. I think Thor Ragnarok's a beautiful show of like old Marvel versus newer Marvel. Like mm. when you go in Sakaar, like that trash planet, and it's all colourful. Yeah. That's like what they should be doing. And when you go in Asgard and see that dull, washed out gold, that's like what they mostly do. It's like, yeah, uh, uh, in, in, in a way, mm. symbolically, them destroying Asgard at the end could have been like the yeah, out with the old and with the new. But then you, because, uh, because I'm looking Endgame, at the Black Endgame, Endgame, Endgame and fucking Infinity War, pretty good looking as well, dude. I mean, effects wise, really fucking good looking. Because effect, I think Infinity War is more. Vivid. I, I, like, there's some great shots in Endgame to it, especially at the end. But like, it's yeah. mostly a grey. It's because they're film. going, they're going back to old set pieces, old looks yeah. of of older films and stuff. 
looks phenomenal as a phenomenal film, but okay, I agree with you on that. And so I'm more worried now because Black Widow. Black Panther and stuff? Or Black Oh, Apart from that CG, apart, apart from that CG. The yeah. <laughs> the train but then you have that sunset. Oh my like, that's god, that great. was a gorgeous shot with a uh, fucking. Um, it's going to kill me. Jordan B. Something B. Jordan? Michael. Michael, Michael B. Jordan. No, it's Michael Jordan. Is it Michael B. It's Is Michael it, B. Jordan. Which one's the basketball one? Michael Jordan. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's dying. He's sitting there. But then I think uh, it's getting better and like the TV shows are brave. But then I'm like, there's a Black Widow film out this year. Yeah. I think that if it was out years ago, yeah, but it's a bit late. I'm not interested. And it does not look that good. I think... I mean, like, vis literally visually, it doesn't look that amazing. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing, um, oh, what's her name? I fucking adore her, dude. She was in, uh, Midsummer. Have you ever seen Midsummer? No, but I know the actress. Is it one who's playing Nat Natasha's mm -hmm. sister? Yeah. Or whatever, yeah. Florence Pugh, I think her name is something like that. I can't fucking... Um... We should definitely do research before episode. <laughs> That's all right. It's we fun. Okay, fine. We haven't really asked Stephen his opinion, off. but... Uh, what, do, what do you, you think, think about like, Black Widow, Stephen? Yeah, what's your opinion? Huh? Do you think women deserve rights? That's very controversial. You don't? <laughs> Stephen. You fucking dickhead. Who's the other fucking dude that's in it? Who's playing Captain Russia or whatever the fuck his name is? <sighs> Bloody Hopper. Uh, Hopper, yeah, what's his fucking name is? Uh, Stranger Things, can't remember his name. I refuse to look it up, mainly because I've lost attention it. Harbour? Something Harbour? Oh, 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 David Harbour. Yeah! Team. Touch tips. Oh. oh yes. But yeah, I am looking forward to him. I like him. I am. I like him a lot. He's great. He's, He's weird. Definitely spoilers for season three of Stranger Things. Have you seen it? Yeah. He's definitely not dead. He's so not. There dead. was actually a wide shot of like the explosion. There was a ladder. Oh. In front, going down to the pit. Yeah. Do you think he's the American in the cage at the end? Probably. Or that. Like, I mean, it's too obvious. Could be a subversion. I think it's a subversion. I think it's who. Okay. But he is alive. I'd say. He is. His truck is. He's in, not in the cage, but he's alive. His. I, don't, I mean, this is even more spoiler, I guess. His truck is seen in filming for season four. His police truck. But, well, Eleven could have taken it or some shit. Someone could have taken it. Well, yeah, probably like, yeah, Eleven will probably be like twenty-three by the time that fucking season comes out. <laughs> well, I mean, the the writers' room. I followed the writers, the Stranger Things writer room on Twitter, and. Mm -hmm. um, Pretty much right after season four, uh, season three finished, they like announced season four. We're like, we're writing right now. Well, I'm pretty sure like after quiet. season one, three seasons were renewed. Like, so Ooh. they could announce it easily. Like, it wasn't like season... shit. Did you think season four is going to be the last? Yeah. Stranger Things. Although, season? I, th I think it's officially the last. Yeah. That's exciting. I don't. I don't necessarily want it to end, but I also don't mind it ending. Yeah. If, if they pull it off, because the Duffer brothers are really fucking good. At Really to be honest, if season good. one was just a mini series of a left a wide open cliffhanger, I wouldn't mind it. I'm very yeah. lucky for the seasons we have after. Mm -hmm. Although season one was the best to me, I think. Season one's by far the best. Definitely, by far. definitely has like a, a consistent tone. Where season three, but then you just love season because you love seeing these characters interact. Yeah, and it's more colorful and vivid. It's but great. You, but you know, deep down, season one's a better one. Yeah, season one. Uh, mm. I mean, season three was probably the the the, the Worst, I think it goes in order. I think one, two, three is the order for Stranger Things. Oh no, season two is worse for me. It's too really? jum too jumbled. You both, you think so? Too jumbled. You don't and, like the and, demon and the, dog thing. No, I do love it, and I love the. You don't like what's his face becoming a dad. <laughs> Basically, the character stuff, apart from Nancy and Jonathan. Yeah. By season three, they have nothing to do. They have to join the kids. Whereas True. In se season one, you had the teen story, the adult story, the kids story, and season mm. three. You have the teens have joined the adults. Where's the teen story? We have, we have Robin. We have Robin. Robin. Yeah. Yes, we've got yeah. Robin, the ice cream girl. So. Yeah, yeah. We've got Robin and Steve. I like her. Steve is the best. Yeah, but best they, even then they've kind of joined the I kids. I love Finn Wolfhard. They've kind of joined the kids' story. Well, yeah, well, I mean, Steve kind of joined the kids' story in season two. Yeah. He became the dad. But that felt like, you know... Not actually, but, yeah. But I feel like their plots intertwined, whereas in season three, it just felt like Nancy and Jonathan were rescuing rats. They have nothing left to do. Mm -hmm. they, literally, they literally just go to the kids' house and check on them, and they're part of their plot. I mean, Weird. and even then, after that, they don't do much. I will tell you, though, who was stand out in season three. There was one performance in that mm. season that whenever he was on screen, I was like, this guy's fucking incredible, dude. I thought you were going to say Who the is the mullet brother? 
Him. Oh. Him. He is. He yeah. blew me. Season two, I thought, oh, he's just a dickhead. Season three, I was like, fuck, that is a performance, dude. I thought he was excellent. What's his name? I, I have no idea. He's oh. super handsome. He's oh, yeah. very fucking handsome. But if, if you take off that mullet, he's... Oh yeah, have you seen set? Have you seen like uh, carp- uh, red carpet pictures of them? Yeah, <sighs> but envious. Yeah, I like that they didn't make him black and white a dick, basically. Yeah, I mean, even then, even they, then- they, they they rounded his character and brought it back in the end. Him not being in season four will kill me because I genuinely I just thought he was such a good character and actor. Yeah, I wouldn't say like. I find him likable now, obviously. Like, no, of course, still a dick, of course not. But I'm he's glad... somewhat redeemed himself. Yeah, I'm good. Gl- yeah. Yeah. I'm glad he's. But he doesn't condone everything else, but he's not a black and white character. The only black and white character I can think of in that is the freaking Terminator guy in season three. He's just g- generically a villain, but I don't think that's a bad thing. The Terminator guy? Yeah, the one that's after the Hopper. Dude. Yeah, he's just Terminator. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, uh, I like the other Russian dude that they that they find, the Hopper. Alexei. Alexei. That's dude, that, that's the name of Hopper's character in Black Widow. <laughs> He's playing a Russian called Alexei. Oh. So another big director that I fucking adore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Drum roll. David Lynch. David Lynch. Oh, is David he Lynch. is he the one? David Lynch. Is that Twin Peaks guy? Twin Peaks. David Lynch. I've seen like just chunks of Twin Peaks, and it's Amazing. his weirdest looking shit. He's a fucking psycho. He's, what he's else has he done? He's done uh, Mulholland Drive. Oh, what a movie. He's done fucking Eraserhead. Probably my favourite. Probably my favourite fucking... Uh, Lynch film. Lynch film. David Lynch film. Eraserhead. That film, to me, is what hell's like. Does he if, do I, if I had to imagine what hell would be like, it would be Eraserhead. Does he do surrealist? Very... Uh, it's, it's just fucking nuts, man. Like for a racer head, right? It's about a, a dude hmm. who <laughs> lives in a, 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 a an apartment solely lit by spotlights. There's like fucking hay or f- fur or fuzz just everywhere in his fucking room, and he goes off to his girlfriend's house, yeah. finds out that she's she was pregnant, had like, delivered the baby her and the baby home to his place and the baby was this fucking grotesque monster thing and it's uh, it's constant crying and and uh, how it drains them really fucking gets to them the, the wife ends up leaving what's the metaphor here what's the theme no idea <laughs> there's weird dream sequences yeah. classic David Lynch shit checkered mm. flooring a woman with big puffy cheeks singing <laughs> Uh, little fetuses start falling from the ground. She starts oh, stepping God. on them. It's fucked, man. It's amazing, though. It is genuinely what I think <laughs> hell is like. Because there's scenes in it. For instance, at the start, when he goes to the girlfriend's mm. house, he sits with uh, the dad and the mum. You know, they're having fucking dinner or whatever. And they make tiny chickens. <laughs> like, small fist-sized chickens. And he puts one on his plate, and he's about to cut into it, and it starts, like, fucking moving its legs, and all this ooze starts coming out of it, and it's, ugh, it's gross. But then... Some shit starts happening. The mum starts screaming, runs away. The yeah. daughter runs away after her. And it's just him and the dad sitting in the room. And for like two minutes of an, a continuous shot, it's just the dad. Can't tell if he's acting or just in a trance. It's that. He's just staring at him. It's fucking insane. It's surreal. I love it. I genuinely love it. I generally don't know. There's so many questions in my head. Um, there's one. Not necessarily. Exclusive. Oh, and uh, as you were talking about fucking Twin Peaks, mm-hmm. great TV show. Dude. You all watch Twin Peaks. Wasn't that like out in the nineties and it came back recently? Eighties. Like eighties and then came back. Yeah, came back for 2010s. another season in the twenty tens. Just one more season, or one more season. And then it's done. One and done. Yeah. It's fucking good. And there was a movie. I think it's called Walk on Fire, something like that. Is that good. set in between or after the all seasons? I can't remember. I've not seen no. it in a very long time. Um, I haven't watched Twin Peaks in a very long time. What would be a big flaw in a director's work for you? Like, what's like a thing you think, or like even a movie you think that's not as good as the rest? 
I've got, I've got one for Edgar Wright. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Rating but. is a big thing for me. If we're talking about direction. No, like, like, like seeing a James Wan film, what's the worst James Wan film? Or what's the, el- the worst element of a James Wan film that you think that's not as good as the rest? That's. He has had some rough spots with the writing. Dragon. Annabelle. The first mm. Annabelle movie. Has he, didn't direct it. he didn't direct it. Ah. He did possibly write it. No. Paul, he definitely produced it. It's part of the Conjuring universe. He didn't direct Annabelle. He didn't. I, I know who directed That was that guy who did Shazam, wasn't it? Great movie. Because Annabelle's in Shazam. She's a little Easter egg in that. Really? Yeah, she's in a shop. That, mm. That's fun. Mm. Uh, uh, Annabelle Creation, pretty good. That's definitely one that, that director that I forgot his name. When you have names of directors. Annabelle, something. The one uh, when she got Maiden. The yeah, one that. Creation. Creation. Annabelle Creation. Okay. <laughs> Not bad. Mm. Annabelle. Annabelle, though? Mm. Garbage. Fucking awful. <laughs> awful film. The Nun. Oh, he wrote The Nun. How many That's Conjuring f- Universe movies are there? There's The Nun, Conjuring, Annabelle. Conjuring 2, Conjuring 3 that's coming Is out. Is The Nun part of Conjuring? The Nun's part oh, of Jesus Conjuring. Christ. The Nun. She comes in The Conjuring 2. Right. She is like the best part of the Conjuring too, because she's not the focused enemy. She is the like puppet master in a way. She's the reason all this shit's happening, mm. and 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 the the Warrens' house, not in England, because right. the majority of the film takes place in England. But they're tormented by the nun in the American home, mm. and dude, she's like the best part of that movie. And then, but that's because she was a small part of it though. Mm. She's creepy. She's scary. A glance of her will make you shit yourself. Mm. She does not have the she does not have the oomph to hold a a, a bigger a, a full length feature on her back. Right. Boring as fuck. <laughs> shit film. You ever seen the nun? No, uh, I do. Awful. Like to, I do like to watch bad horror films. I think there's a lot of fun in that with someone. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I watched. It, I, I went into Insidious thinking it'd be bad. Oh, the and course then I of loved it. La Leona. La Le- 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 Le. It's. Uh, La, La Llorona. The curse of La, La Llorona. Is that in the fucking Conjuring universe? It's Conjuring universe. Jesus Christ. Because the, the priest from Annabelle 1 is in it. That's the only connection. They should just join the MCU. <laughs> <laughs> big big flaw. Uh, not Iron big Man flaw. beating the shit out of a doll. But I was watching... I was watching Hot Fuzz the day with my girlfriend. And, okay, I point, yeah. and I pointed out that... Do you remember? There was a bunch of hooded youths... By the, the fountain. At what, but when he's doing these patrols at night and he's... He yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, just going, he's just going to the pub. Yeah, yeah and he just yeah. looks. And then he comes back later and there's graffiti on the fountain. And then Danny crashes his car into the fountain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that graffiti and those youths, that was an entire subplot deleted from the film. Yeah, they kept that scene in and they kept the neighbourhood watching. Oh, look at those youths, you need to sort them out. Yeah. And, there was, and he said, I noticed some graffiti there. And he's like, graffiti, we need to sort this out. That entire subplot, it was maybe a whole subplot, I don't know what it was maybe deleted. So, and I think, because Edgar Wright's just, and any other director I think, oh yeah, whatever, but because Edgar Wright's just so good. Like, you would, you would like, like to have seen where that went. Yeah, it's like great fellow directors, yeah. but by Edgar Wright's standards, it's like a bit below. Like, yeah. I'd, I'd rate, I'd say Hot Fuzz is the worst, quotation marks, film, film in the Cornetto trilogy, but it's also just one of the greatest films yeah. Generally. Yeah. That's how it, good it, he is. It, it holds up on its own, but in, in the trilogy, yeah. you feel it's not as. I'd say Shaun of the Dead's probably the strongest in comedy, but I just like the World's End plot. I like the character in World's End. I like. Yeah, it's all when, personal when, preference, isn't it? I mean, for spoilers it's for what it, you feel it's like, like you enjoy. seven years old, I guess, isn't it? World's yeah. End. Seven years old so this year. Um, when they, when you're fighting and the sleeves come down, you see the bandages. That, was, uh, that hits me every time. That's so sad. I know. It's horrible. And like, there's some, I mean, obviously he's in a fucking therapy group at the start, but you, that could be Alcoholics Anonymous for, you know. So it's yeah, still a bit of a mystery. But later on, there's a great part in the film, and you don't, I didn't notice it like fifth watch because I'm an idiot. Um, when, remember when the, they're in the pub and the bully comes up and the guy starts being sad about it? Uh-huh. Gary says to him, you know, if you keep that in, it could lead to bad coping mechanisms later in life. Where do you think he got that from? Where did he learn? He learned it. In a therapy tree. session, fuck. Like there's just so many little hints, and then when they're like, "Shows your arm to prove you're not a blank," like shows a scar on your arm, like up here. Mm-hmm. He's like, "No, I don't want to show you my arms." That, and then the second watch, I was like, "Oh, that's so fucking sad." Horrifying. 
Yeah, it's, yeah, I just think it's really great. I think Gary King's probably my favorite Simon Pegg character in those films. Mm -hmm. Like, I like Nicholas Angel. I like the love romance of Danny, kind of mm -hmm. the tropes they do. But I think it's not the most entertaining, but it's the film I can appreciate most. Yeah. But Hot Fuzz is probably the worst, even though it's still great. Just Hot it, Fuzz has some fucking brilliant bits in it. No, it's, mo it's the most to the me. The bit where he of. finds the, the, the hound in the fucking uh, in the, 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 the bedroom. The hound? The guy that plays the hound in Game of Thrones. He plays the... Well, oh, the, the Yorp. Yorp. That's the guy, that's the, the hound. I'm sorry, I'm old-fashioned to me. It's just always Michael. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, that, that bit's great. The fucking mm. the, the, the supermarket fight. <laughs> that's a great bit. The, the fucking sauce jar blows up in front of the guy. <laughs> no! It's Bolognese! It's Bolognese! <laughs> There's so many lines that like... What a shame. That, that's great! There's so many like, meme, like, memes off it already, but there's mm -hmm. so many little lines that like, I meme with my friends that are, like, you wouldn't meme, like, sometimes I just slap my friend and I go, hey, that, that weren't me though. Like, just because Danny says it in a funny voice at the start, when like, they wrote twat in this police hell at. Yeah. It's just, oh, oh they're just some of the greatest films. I love, I love that trilogy. Shaun of the Dead too. I wanted the fourth so badly. I love the but... da 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 <laughs> <laughs> That bit's great. World's End, I think, just has more subtle humour. Like, when the teacher's like, oh, please, call me Guy, and Gary and his friend burst out laughing because they're calling a the teacher by his first name. Mm -hmm. There's little things like that, and like, they're just so drunk. I think it's just because the drunk acting's so good, like, when... Yeah, have you? I, I actually watched uh, a Simon Pegg interview. I think it was on mm. Conan O'Brien or some shit. Yeah, they weren't drunk at all. But... They weren't drunk at all, and uh, he actually showed, because like, they had, like, a, a, like a, a nine-step mm -hmm. system, where it was, like... You know, level one drunk to level nine drunk, and like yeah. he on on the interview the he like showed like the ah. different levels of drunk. And it was like oh he actually there was there's a structure there to was a structure the chaos. to the yeah the, the drunkenness. Which I love is brilliant. I love when Sam the sister is asking Andy why are you going to the next pub, and Andy's like oh well we have no better idea so fuck it. And he just punches the glass in the door. Easy man. I fucking I have not seen I have not seen that movie in a long fucking time. I think we should do an episode on, World, on like the Cornetto trilogy. That'd be we fun. We should rewatch them, yeah. We should rewatch them and fucking. Maybe, I mean, there's three of us, because Steven's obviously <gasps> here. We'll all watch one each. I can do World's End. I can watch it anytime. I'll watch, I'll watch fucking uh, Shaun of the Dead. He gets the fucking movie. He gets, hot buzz. He gets the plot that got deleted. Because <laughs> <laughs> he ain't fucking here. Dude, okay, I'll actually tell you. Uh, I'm sorry, Mike. I'll actually tell you a little story about Hot Fuzz. Mm. Um, it traumatised me as a child. Genuinely traumatised me. The, 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 bodies in, the bodies underground fucked me up. Really, yeah? I'll tell you a bit that fucked me up. What? The church, Spike. Oh, the... Oh, that God. fucked... That, I watched that, like, when it came out. Mm -hmm. And when, whatever year it came out... You would have been... Was, you would have been nine. The one nine years old, there you go. Came out in 2007 or six. Well, yeah, Late 2006, I think. Yeah, I would have been about... Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't have seen them in cinema, so we're doing DVD. Yeah, but yeah. been after when it came out mm -hmm. on DVD. Um, but I watched it, and I just remember being genuinely fucking mortified. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, like these fucking thoughts went in my head. Like, what if my parents go to a party at a church <laughs> and they stand <laughs> and they stand under this the, the fucking? <laughs> oh, I've rewatched that. Uh, I've rewatched that. I watched the film, but that that uh, fair scene is that a fair? I don't know the church. Yeah, Fair, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Um, the, the scene that she opens with announcement saying someone's having a nasty surprise at three o'clock. Oh, yeah, it's just so many little Ooh. things you notice. I mean, obviously, there's big stuff like World's End and Sean well, the Dead. Because obviously, the townspeople are in on it. Yeah, the, 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 it's so a vicar. Was... It's a vicar. He's in it. Yeah. That's great. I mean, then you have like Skinner being like, I'm sure if we bash your head in, all sorts of things will spill out. <laughs> Dude. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's Brilliant. obvious stuff like if you watch, if you watch Shaun the Dead, mm -hmm. obviously like Ed sums up the plot, like we'll get a Bloody Mary, we'll go to Winchester, do some shots, and then, and in the world's end, the amount of people like that lose, that they lose the night out, mm -hmm. is who dies first. Like, oh, they lose Old Man first in the night out, and they lose Old Man in the movie first. We watch World's End, you, they literally sum up the movie at the very start. Like, you let, the, oh. I mean, in that flashback, it ends with them lying in the hill, looking at the sunset. The movie ends with them lying on the hill, looking at the burning city. Also, and when oh, well, David like Bradley plays comes it, back with the sword. that that odd guy in World's End, one of the crazy straw who knows everything. Mm, yeah, kind the, of. Yeah, the weird guy. He yeah. says 
that night, back in the 90s, the shooting star came down. That was the aliens landing. If you watch that flashback scene, you see a shooting star going by Gary. Oh. Yeah, just so many... Edgar just, Wright's so fucking smart, dude. And he just, just he clipped did, the shit out he, of that I know, that hurt me so much. <laughs> There's so much rewatchability in his movies. Yeah. Like, yeah. you just appreciate it so much. I love them all. What else has he done other than... Kinetic Trilogy, Baby Space, Driver. I've yet to watch Space. Space. Do you never watch Space? The TV I, show? I, I watched the first episode. It's and great. It, Do you know that Shaun of the Dead originally came from a Space episode? Yeah, I find, I, apparently there's a lot of jokes he's playing, left. He's playing to... too many hmm. zombie games, Simon Pegg, and he, 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 he like has a dream where hmm. everyone's a zombie and he starts fucking going nuts on it. That was that was where they came up for the idea of Shaun of the Dead. My friend phoned me about it. He said like, there's a lot of jokes in Space that are in basically the other uh, great yeah, films. it's so... Hmm. It's just that it's spaced as so classically Ed Edgar Wright. I feel like there's stuff Edgar Wright. There's Edgar stuff Edgar Wright puts in the films. I think isn't for people. It's just for him. Like, yeah. see, remember in Shaun the Dead when Ed's on the ga the game machine, mm -hmm. and then money comes out, and you hear dun 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 playing over, like uh -huh. that's the tune. That's in every other film. It's in it's in the. Uh, it's, it's, like, it's, it's like the Pizza Planet truck yeah. and all the fucking it's DreamWorks when, films. In the Hot Fuzz, when she says, someone call the police, you hear da 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 at some point. In World's End, you hear it when Gary's running through a bar. And that feels like, that's not for an audience, right? You're just doing that so you can rewatch it yourself and be like, I did that. Yeah, like, go. why would an audience, only a saddle would notice it. Indeed, indeed. Um, that's another thing that I love as well. Uh, the, the two things that Edgar Wright has done, mm. both music syncs. Shaun of the Dead, at the end where they're they, they're like walking around and they're yeah. doing the to the, the music, tune. fucking great. Yeah. Baby Driver at the end where they're doing the shootout, they're do 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 do, and it's like the actual gunshots are lining yeah, up with the <laughs> beat of the song. Oh, that's great. Yeah. He's he's fucking phenomenal, dude. He's just great. He, he, yeah, like doing visuals great, and then but he's just so good at sound design. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like um, yeah. it's just because it gets mean so much as well. It's then. Hot fuzz when I, I, I think it's for like a little, it's like for a little thing, mm -hmm. like it's a little chase. But he goes punch that shit, and it's like different shots of the car, and it's just starting the fucking engine. Yeah, I just love shit like that. I love um, great. I, lo so I love shit like um, when Martin Blower, I think the drama guy in Hot Fuzz is dry, is like going too fast. You think a chase sequence is going to happen? And it goes mm -hmm. like start lights, pew, and it lasts one second, and they stop the car. <laughs> like the rise of volume to lower it makes that comedy so good. I love it. Well, I think mutually, I mean, we both seen directors. We both, I'd say we both love Sam Raimi. I love Sam Raimi. I, I, I mean, I think Evil Dead is also an inspir inspiring story because he basically made that by himself. That was like yeah. an indie, the most indie film I've heard and of. And then when he tried to make the sequel, they wouldn't give him his footage from the first one to use. So he had to re remake it. He remade the first, in the first five minutes, he remade the entire film. Do you know, okay, so fun fact about Evil Dead, right? Mm. One of my favourite all-time horror, you know, uh, trilogies. Mm -hmm. Gets very jokey and kiddy as it goes on, but yeah. I love it. Army of Darkness is great, it's hilarious. Army of Darkness, that, because that, that start, the second one. movie ends with everyone praising him, and the third movie ends with them all hating him. No, starts with them all hating him. Yeah. So they they kind of had they kind of retcon the second movie's ending as well. Yeah, the second movie's ending. They go back and Basically, he, if you he marathon shoots the thing at the air and everyone's like, "Whoa!" The, but it comes like, in. The, yeah. This is like a trilogy of movies that you should not watch in a marathon. No, I was so confused. See, when I was younger, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. One little fun fact: my first ever Blu-ray I ever bought, mm -hmm. Evil Dead One. Evil Dead One to this day still, and I don't get scared of horror films. I do not. Mm. Horror films do not fuck me up whatsoever. Does that scare you? Evil Dead One creeps me the fuck out still. What about some of the shots, dude? See when you get like the shot of um, the, the girlfriend down in the, the cellar, her face oh. is all fucked up, and the only light is the gap in the cellar mm -hmm. door, and it's just it's 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 like from afar, mm -hmm. she's looking up like that, and all you see lit is her fucking face, dude. Shit like that creeps me out dude i don't know what it is about that movie but there's something I mean, about if you watch that, when you're younger that would fuck up as well yeah I but even today though I, I can watch fucking anything but evil dead still creeps me out evil dead 2 however by far the best one funniest funniest that fucking little hand right like, yeah he's fucking he chainsaw he gets a fucking chainsaw hand for god's sake it's amazing hmm. i've not seen armory darkness yet you should watch it make that my homework it's pretty good it's not the best I'd, I think it's. The I'd watch least. it as its own film. I wouldn't watch it as like thinking it's an Evil Dead film. 
I mean, yeah. is it literally not? It's not even called Evil Dead. I mean, it's just called Army of Darkness, isn't it? Um, is it called Evil Dead Army of Darkness? It was meant to be called Evil Dead Army of Darkness, but the studio made them change it to just Army of Darkness. I think it's so they can make it more independent. They did exactly yeah. why they did it. Um, there was there was uh, the original title, brilliant by the way. The original title of that film what? should have stayed that. What? Medieval Dead. Oh. Medieval Dead. That would have been amazing. That would have been. That's the name, but it's Army of Darkness. Weird, weird change. Medieval Dead would have been the fucking most perfect name for he that does, film. He does that thing I love with trilogies, where yeah. like the third movie is completely different than the other two. Like for mm. Ragnarok, love it. I just love trilogies. I mean, I guess if I like the Cornell trilogy, the third one's very different from the comedy of the first two. Yeah. I think the third film and like the third season of a show you're doing, mm -hmm. if you were to have like a free structure, mm -hmm. I think you need to make it very different from the other two. Yeah, it requires the change up. I 100% yeah. agree. Like Toy Story 3, different. Toy Story 3, different. Back to Future 3, different. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's my favourite one. You yeah, That's your favourite one? Yeah. I'd, Two's my favourite one. I think, I just because... Two rehashed a lot of elements in the, not literally the flat like the stuff when they mm. go back in time to fifties. I love the synchron like synchronizing of that. Yeah, yeah. But um, just when they're doing rehashing elements in the future, mm -hmm. like the skateboard, I just think nah, I've seen it. Yeah. Like Over looks it. pretty, but yeah. no, I'm not into it. Like the stuff where that the home, I think just stops the plot dead in its tracks. There's some funny bits, but if you watch it a few times, it's like, oh, Marty McFly's daughter. Mm -hmm. I fancied her when I was little, and I didn't know that was <laughs> Michael J. Fox in a wig. Dude, uh, what's her fucking name? Leah, uh, Leah, Leah Thompson. Leah Thompson, dude. Oh my fucking. I know you showed me a scene of her and Howard the Duck. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great scene, by the way. She's about to fuck a duck. <laughs> she gets stopped, unfortunately. I love Leah Thompson. She's so fucking cool. I'm really not they recast Marty's girlfriend. I like the was first his dad, movie. Wasn't it? Wasn't his dad? Fucking no, no, Crispin Glover. He's he. He Crispin tried Glo to sue because Crispin they used Glover's his likeness. Yeah, wasn't that in the second one? Second one. He was in the first one. Didn't want to come back for the second. They used his likeness. Didn't they come and back and in... fucking made him dangle? Didn't they come back in the third? <laughs> Possibly. I can't remember. I have not watched Back to the Future in wait, a wait, very who, long who time. Wait, who is playing the dad in the second one? I don't know his name. Or I probably would know his name, but I just don't know. They're a really impressive actor then. I didn't know. I thought it was the third one. Is he, one isn't he in the third one? Or is it just rehashed material? Possibly rehashed. I can't. I genuinely can't remember. I don't think. I think I'm gonna have to. I'll have to re rewatch. Uh, is it David Zemeckis? No, what's his name? Zach. Zach Zemeckis. It's not Zach. Something Zemeckis. I'll pop up on the fucking screen. Something Zemeckis. He, because a lot of people think it's actually Spielberg that directed those. He mm. produced and wrote them, maybe? Did he write them? I think they got different writers. It's impressive because Marty has a really good arc across the three films. He does. He when really he does. Doesn't. I mean, it's, dude, it's pretty sorry, stupid. We haven't brought up, we brought up, we've kind of brought up soundtracks, but that film soundtrack, mm -hmm. dude. That, film's that was Alan Silvestri, wasn't it? Soundtrack. Uh, sure about it's, uh, I think whoever did it, you did a fuck. It's Alan Silvestri. He did because he, yeah, he's done Avengers. He's done Back to the Future. He did Avengers. Yeah, he's done he, the Avengers theme. Alan Silvestri. Back to the Future. Alan Silvestri. What a fucking legend, dude! Mm -hmm. Great what guy. Legend. Uh, I would have said something cliche like fucking Danny Elfman or some shit. But nah, nah, you can, that's, you can tell no when it's Danny. El you that's can, no, yeah, he's got a very. That's no Tim Burton film, my mm. dude. I didn't know Danny Elfman didn't do the third Spider-Man film. Did not. I'm pretty sure he didn't. I'm pretty sure it was a different composer. The Spider-Man soundtrack, the Spider-Man, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man main theme is brilliant. I don't really rank them. I think they're all great for those respective versions of the character. Like the Andrew Garfield theme. I, I mean, he has two themes. The first movie theme is actually. Does he? Yeah. Dude, those, mo those movies are so pushed out my fucking brain that I didn't even know. I think the theme. soundtracks are great. Um, the first, the first Andrew Garfield one is na 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 na, but the second film is da 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 da. So yeah, they're very different themes. I got them stuck in my head. They suit Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland suit his, and Sam Raimi's. That's a great theme. I I'll find the swelling Elfman soundtrack would suit Holland, so I don't really rank them mm -hmm, together. You know. Mm -hmm. I get what you mean. I get what you mean. When it comes to the Amazing Spider-Man, I want to say this: the Amazing Spider-Man. We should do an episode on that, man. We should That's because so I bad. actually quite like the first one. I think the first one's alright. I think the second one, I can't sit through it. The second one, I've I, sat through it once in my life. I've tried it a second time, mm -hmm. couldn't do it. I think the second one's visually very good. impressive. Like the, I think the suit looks the best. 
I mean, compared to, to compared to Tobey Maguire, it looks the best. Compared to Tom I think Holland, to, I think Tobey Maguire is just nostalgia filled. I really don't he's like Tobey like Maguire. He's just like goofy. Spider-Man. The eyes are annoying. Like they're everything about the old Spider-Man so it's annoying. Mm. It's the 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 webs are like three D. They're like sticky out. Yeah, they. It raised webbing. Raised webbing. Mm-hmm. Whereas Andrew Tom Garfield, is, Andrew Garfield ones looked the most like an actual proper fitting I'll suit. Like, yeah. like the shots, the fucking incredible shots of him diving. I think it's in the first one. The, well, the second one at the yeah, very the, start. The layer. The fucking the, the, the fabric flirting on the and back. And also the costume. Oh. Uh, the first movie costume got a lot of controversy, Andrew Garfield. But I think really? that should be a good. Was it the blue gloves? I don't know. I think, but I think, like, don't make like one of the things about Raimi was how did he make that fucking costume? True. I think you have to actually show yeah. like a, sh- a not shit version, but like a more robust version. When it comes to it, uh, when it comes to it, Tom Holland Spider Man had the best uh, proto suit. I'd call it. But yeah, it had the best, uh, the most solid mm. reasoning for suit building. Because yeah. Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire both made their suits. I mean, in the first, the but, first Andrew Garfield, I can see that being made. It looks like patched up, you know. Yeah, it does. It looks, Latex it looks, shit. Yeah, it looks a little. It looks like a diving suit. He's altered. Yeah, like it looks like it could be made. Like and the screen and the shit. screen printing, we saw it getting made. True. Whereas, yeah, that's whereas right. Sam yeah, Raimi, yeah. it's just kind of like you drew it and then you made a full-on movie studio costume. Yeah, it didn't look like someone. He had um, his fuck. He had a fucking sewing machine. But I, think, out. I think I think Spider-Man Two is one of the best. Very, I mean, compared to Marvel, I think like the blacks actually looking black in that film. The 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 red looking it's so very, red. Yeah. And. It's, a, it's yeah. visually pleasing. Anyway, thank, thank you, you. Thank so you for much watching. for watching. This 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 is a different. This would be type. a better setup next time. Yeah, th- this this is a very rough first episode. We mm. don't even have. We kept mentioning Stephen. Stephen is our third co-host. Shockingly, this JPEG isn't here. This JPEG is not here. You know, mm. we want him here for the next one. We'll have a two camera setup next time, mm. and we'll have more planned out segments. This is more of a, just a conversation. Yeah. This was a start off. We will definitely know directors' names. We'll know directors' names. We'll know, <laughs> we'll know writers' names. We'll know the lot. Don't you worry. But yeah, I thought it went well. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Lovely talking. Good little conversation. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye. <laughs>